So now we're going to talk about mast cells, how they recognize an infection and how they help eliminate the pathogen from the body. And we'll talk about the mast cells and their normal role in fighting infections now. Later, we'll see mast cells activate against allergens. So what do we want to know about mast cells? Well, they're resident immune cells, which means they uh, aren't typically found in the bloodstream. You're going to find them residing in tissues, specifically the connective tissue that underlines epithelial and other mucosal tissues. So they're resident, like dendritic cells and macrophages. They spend their time in the tissues waiting to recognize pathogens there. Mast cells are granulocytes, which means they have these granules about 50 to 200 in their cytoplasm. These granules are packed with toxins and cytokines and other molecules that can be released, fused with the plasma membrane, and cause inflammation very quickly. So within minutes of mast cells recognizing an infection, they will release their granules and trigger inflammation. Um, how do mast cells recognize pathogens? Well, all immune cells have receptors on their surface they use to engage pathogens. The receptor, the key receptor on the surface of mast cells is called the FC epsilon R1 receptor. So we learned about FC receptors in, when we talked about antibody effector function. FC receptors bind the FC region of antibodies. Specifically, this FC epsilon receptor, type 1, is going to bind the FC epsilon region of the IgG, I'm sorry, IgE isotype antibody. So it binds the FC region of IgE. Where did IgE come from? Um, well, uh, when naive B cells recognize a pathogen using their B cell receptor, and when uh, CD4 T cells recognize a pathogen using their T cell receptor, uh, if the T cells differentiate into the Th2 effector type, they will signal to B cells to isotype switch to make IgE. And this process normally occurs when uh, the immune system detects something like a parasite, a large multicellular organism that um, directs the T cell response to primarily be Th2 response and directs the B cell response to be primarily a IgE response. So now that we have IgE, how does that trigger mast cell activation? Well, I'll tell you that IgE binds the uh, FC epsilon uh, receptor, type 1. And what's interesting is that it binds uh, with very high affinity and binds with, even without antigen. So during uh, an infection with a parasite, when the immune cells, the B cells, make IgE, IgE, you don't find it in the bloodstream. It's in very, very low levels, almost undetectable in the bloodstream. That's because IgE has such high affinity for this receptor that it goes and it binds to it. You don't even need antigen binding here. So anytime anybody makes IgE, either against parasitic molecules or, as we'll see later, allergens, you're going to find that IgE uh, decorated on the surface of mast cells where you find the FC epsilon receptor. And so this mast cell will just sit here and wait for recognizing a pathogen. Maybe the pathogen comes by, maybe it doesn't, but the mast cell is now ready to recognize a pathogen using IgE stuck to its surface. So now let's say the parasite has um, uh, invaded the tissue that the mast cell is embedded in and so that antibody, the antigen binding site on that IgE, binds and recognizes some molecule on the surface of the parasite. Uh, great, so now we have antibody binding antigen. How is that gonna trigger an immune response? So um, if a mast cell is decorated with all these IgEs bound to all these epsilon epsilon receptors, and we know that the IgE antigen binding site has high affinity, for the antigen on the surface of the parasite, then what would happen is these receptors would cluster together. Uh, they would move around on the plasma membrane and cluster together. This process should look somewhat familiar to you. If you remember how a B cell activates, B cell activation, one of the, the, the first process is B cell receptor cross-linking. When all of the B cell receptors 
cluster together in one area of a B cell because the antigen binding site on the B cell receptor is binding some antigen. So this is very similar, but it's not using uh, a B cell receptor, it's using the FC epsilon receptor. So this is known as FC epsilon receptor cross-linking. Uh, the EFC epsilon receptor doesn't directly bind the pathogen. It indirectly binds the pathogen via the IgE. So if you look at the molecules here, FC epsilon receptors binding the FC epsilon region of IgE. IgE's antigen binding site is binding antigen found on the surface of the parasite. So we have FC epsilon receptor crosslinking. This will lead to mast cell degranulation. So when these receptors all cluster together, that sends a signal into the cytoplasm to release the granules. And the granules will release their contents, that is called degranulation, and you will have the um, beginning of an attack to help rid the body of the parasite. So let's, let's go over one thing in the granule. Uh, there are many things in the granule, and uh, we'll get to those maybe in a later video, but let's cover one thing that's in the granule. So here's a mast cell. It's in some connective tissue in the body, underlying some epithelial tissue. Right? This could be your skin or your uh, respiratory system, your gastrointestinal system. I've drawn a blood vessel here as well, lined with epithelial cells. So there's a mast cell. It's got granules in it. It's got FC epsilon receptors on their surface which may or may not be binding uh, IgE, let's say um, there was some infection and B cells generated IgE. IgE will bind the FC epsilon receptor. Again, this interaction happens in the absence of antigen, so this mast cell is just sitting there waiting to see if it binds anything with its um, IgE-covered FC epsilon receptors. So now let's say, oh, parasitic infections here, right? Parasite invades the tissue. Right? It's trying to dig in, it's trying to attach, trying to find nutrients. Well, luckily we have made IgE. So B cells and T cells work together to generate IgE. IgE found its way onto the surface of mast cells. And now we have uh, FC epsilon receptor crosslinking and degranulation. So let's cover one thing that's in the granules. One thing, histamine. Histamine is uh, generated from the amino acid histidine, and it is an inflammatory molecule. So it's going to do a number of things to reduce inflammation to hopefully help us get rid of this pathogen. Histamine is toxic to many uh, parasitic organisms, so it can directly affect the organism, but it's also going to induce inflammation. So how does histamine induce inflammation? Well, many of our cells have histamine receptors on their surface. So when histamine binds the histamine receptor, that triggers some change in the cell, which is gonna help provoke an immune response. So endothelial cells, for example, the ones that line blood vessels, they have histidine, I'm sorry, histamine receptors on their surface. So when histamine is released from cells, such as mast cells, and binds the histamine receptor on the surface of endothelial cells, that will trigger increased vascular permeability, right? one of the uh, things that happens during inflammation. So now we have increased vascular permeability, we're going to have um, characteristics of inflammation like swelling or edema, and that will bring in more fluid uh, to help flush the pathogen out, to help bring in more immune cells and immune proteins into the site. Um, so histidine causes uh, increased vascular permeability, swelling. Histamine also binds histamine receptors on the surface of smooth muscle cells. Many of your tubes have a layer of smooth muscle wrapped around them, and we can relax and contract these muscle cells, and that can cause uh, either dilation or constriction of tubes. So when histamine binds histamine receptors on the smooth muscle cells, it typically induces Contraction. So we talk about the uh, constriction of tubes. So um, if this is a tube, like a gastrointestinal tract or a respiratory tract, it would be squeezing the tube to try to get rid of the pathogen. Uh, coughing, squeezing, um, vomiting, as we'll see shortly. Um, there are also cells within the epithelial um, layer, 
that when histamine binds them will allow the movement of fluid into the tube, production of mucus into the tube. And all of this is trying to help rid the um, body of the pathogen because when you take a tube and you flood it with fluid and you squeeze it, um, you're inducing things like vomiting, diarrhea, coughing, sneezing. It depends which part of the body we're talking about. Um, if we're in the lungs, we're coughing and, and wheezing and having bronchioconstriction. The whole purpose of this is to try to rid the body of the pathogen. Cough it out, squeeze it out, flush it out. So histamine is a key uh, mediator of inflammation induced by mast cells. And mast cells will release histamine, that's one of their uh, substances found in the granules, due to FC epsilon receptor crosslinking. So we'll pause here and we'll continue in the next video to talk more about what mast cells release in order to help get rid of pathogens.